Hello, and welcome back to Lean on Success, where process improvement is self-improvement. My name is Ben. I'm a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, and I've got Chris back on with me today. How you doing, Chris? I'm, I'm just waiting for people to pay me back for their tacos, man. <laughs> I have been at, I've been at my door waiting, and I have not gotten my six bucks back, and I'm the, just disappointed yeah. in like, all my, all my co- coworkers. Yeah, um, Elsa, let it go. It's been 15 years. Let it go, Elsa. Hey, that's six dollars, man. In this inflation, we need or in this economy, I need that six bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Today that six dollars is more like seventy-two cents. But that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking a little bit in general about the economy and the impending recession. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on the used car market. And so it got me thinking about all of the cars and I've bought probably a couple dozen cars, you know, in 25 years that I've been a functioning adult. Uh, Some of those years I was a non-functioning adult. We're not going to talk about that right now. I bought a lot of cars, Chris. And so I thought it'd be a good idea for me to share the five dumbest mistakes I made buying a car. Okay, let's go. I'm I'm interested, especially like how much money you spent, because just to (laughs) let you know, my first car that was bought was for four hundred and seventy five dollars. Wow. OK, yes. you could buy a pair of Jordans for more than that. Yes, and, very true. Yep. Yeah, and I had a car that had air conditioning and everything. Well, sort of. <laughs> so, yeah, I, that. yeah, I've definitely purchased a car for less money than that. And it definitely did not last me anywhere near as long as yours did. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you, but that's not one of my dumbest mistakes. Okay. I'm going to start here. These are going to be in order of egregiousness, according to me. Okay. (laughs) These aren't in chronological order, but you'll see a lot of the same vehicles being referenced in these stories. Interesting. So number five, dumbest mistake I ever did. (laughs) Number five, (laughs) number five, dumbest mistake I ever made was I bought a car without telling my wife I was doing it. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> dang really yes so okay. what had happened was <laughs> i was driving a 2007 sonata alexis was two years old and we are talking about getting a bigger vehicle i had been wanting a toyota 4runner for a few years and you had been i been talking about it that's true i had been talking about it for a while i got promoted on my job you know things were looking pretty good for us and I was just looking on the internet and I saw one that had a pretty decent price on it. So uh, I was set to go into work late this particular day. So I stopped by the dealership on my way to work, kind of talked to people, ran some numbers, got a good idea of what the car costs. So as I'm leaving, going to work, I'm getting off of the off ramp off of the interstate to go onto Prudential Drive. And as I'm doing that, my car stalls, the, the Hyundai stalls. Oh, wow. Okay. And so... My initial reaction is, oh, crap, I'm on the interstate. What's going on? Now, I was able to restart the car, and it drove just fine after that. But the little kid in me was like, this is a sign that you need to buy the forerunner. <laughs> this, this was all the proof you needed that is, this was go time. That was all I needed. I had a half day at work that day. So I went into work, got off of work. I went straight to the dealership, did all the paperwork. They had some type of paperwork or or some type of final thing that that I had to do before I could complete the transaction. But they said, hey, you can go ahead and just take it home for a few hours and then come back later this evening and we'll finish all your paperwork. So I pull up, I back into the driveway as I come home and Tashina greets me and I say, hey, I got something to show you. I take her outside and she's like, you bought a truck. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So I spent the next hour and a half trying to convince my wife why this was a good purchase. I was explaining how we were able to afford it, uh, you know, going through all of the litany. And after much talking and and her giving me major side eye, she allowed me to keep the truck. (laughs) (laughs) So dumb decision because I didn't tell her, but that truck served us extremely well. I I recently sold it for, for something else, but. Um, absolutely love that truck and it was a great vehicle for our family lots of memories made uh, in that truck 
That was number five. Okay, so number four, biggest mistake. All right, all right, here we go. I don't know how number four could be any bigger than number five. Oh, man. Because you're sleeping in the bed of number five. (laughs) And she could say, you can go home, but you can't stay here. Oh, wait, you're home. You just can't stay here because of that, all right? Yeah, well, so she she allowed it. Number four was something where we were buying a new car for her. Okay. And we rolled negative equity into a brand new car. Oh, yeah. It really? Just, yeah. These, 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 these things, I started from the bottom, dude. These things are going to get progressively Man. worse. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, my just you wait goodness. And see. Okay. Okay. Because all I'm see. saying is, I've not even done four or five yet. And that's on the low scale for you. <laughs> all right. So, so all right. this Please was a continue. couple, this was a couple years after I bought the, Sonata. Okay. Now, we were driving compact cars at the time, and we were thinking about expanding our family. This is before Alexis was conceived, and I wanted to buy a little bit bigger sedan to accommodate our growing family. And I bought the Hyundai Sonata, and that was going to be our family vehicle. Okay. Well, after a while of owning it, uh, Tashina realized that she didn't like the car. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I want I want something different. I want something different. So we were at the Toyota dealership. So I'm like, okay, well, if we're going to splurge on a new car, I'm a big fan of Toyota. I believe in their reliability. So we go to Toyota dealership. And of course, she wants a new car. She doesn't want to do anything with used. We had a whole bunch of issues with used cars in the past. She wants a new brand new car. Now we had our Corolla. And I, this Corolla is going to come up in the conversation later. We essentially had rolled another car, actually another Corolla of the same year into this Corolla that we bought. And it was only about a year after we had made that purchase. So the depreciation of the vehicle had gone down so much faster than what our payments were that a $30,000 Toyota Camry XLE turned into a $36,000 Toyota Camry XLE. Oh my dear God. Did you check your brain at the door before going in, man? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, what this, the what? This was before I actually had sense with money. Like people okay, look at me now right. and say, oh, you're so good with money. Yeah. I wasn't always like that. This is a recent development. <laughs> We had the Camry till we paid it off and we literally drove it until it got totaled. So okay. that was a wonderful car for us. Again, a lot of great memories, you know, made in that car. And it was the probably the last new car I will ever buy in my life. <laughs> Understood. Okay. All right. So that was number four. All right. Oh my gosh. Okay. I can't wait to hear number three. So number three was I refinanced my car loan. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, man. I'm having way more fun telling these stories than I thought I would. Mm. I was living in South Florida. Okay. And I had, I went through a succession of cars in a short period of time. So I previously was driving, prior to me moving to South Florida for a, a new job, I was driving my mother's old Mazda MPV. It was like a 91 MPV. Okay. Long story short, timing belt snapped on it. A couple months before I moved, I bought, I believe it was a 1996 Oldsmobile Cutlass. Okay. So decent car, had decent power, you know, it was was suited my needs just fine. Didn't really have any major problems with it. For six months into that ownership, I noticed that it was leaking a little bit of coolant. Because I was broke, no credit or, or not very good credit. I didn't have credit cards, didn't have savings. So I said, well, instead of me trying to fix whatever's wrong with this car, I need to just get another one. Okay. So I ended up getting a GMC Sonoma. This is a 2000 GMC Sonoma. It was a standard shift. Just this a, a brand new you, car? No, no, no. This was okay. this car at the time was four years old, four okay. or five years old at the All time. Right. So you were so, in your like late twenties at this point in time, correct? I'm in my late twenties. I okay. buy this five year old pickup truck. It was a All good right. price. I could afford it. All of that. Sure. Long story short. After I moved back to, I actually, it was great. I had a pickup truck because I was able to pack up all my belongings in the bed of the truck as I drove back from South Florida, back to Tallahassee, okay. because my, the job that I went, that I left for relocated back to Tallahassee where I was living previously. So once I got that promotion, wow. I got two more promotions within a year at that same job. 
And I said, you know what? It's time for me to buy like a nice car. I, I, I haven't been able, I haven't driven a decent car. Snowman was nice, but it wasn't a professional. That's something that, you know, young kids drive. So <laughs> okay. I decided to buy a 2003 Saturn View. Now, this car had a sunroof. It had leather seats. It had a CD player, had the nice sound system. This was by far the nicest car I had ever owned. The Sonoma wasn't that bad. I, I traded in Sonoma for this, and my payments were about $480 a month. I believe it was for 60 months. So I could afford it because okay. I had a roommate, you know, Tallahassee. Rent was cheap. Life was decent. I was making okay money back then. And then I lost my job. Oh. And I had to move to Jacksonville to start my life over. So as I'm scrambling, trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to pay all my bills, I call the bank where my car loan is and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to be behind on my payments. I need some help. What can y'all do for me? And they said, oh, well, we can refinance your loan for you. We can drop your payments by about $80. And I said, OK, I just signed up for it because I was desperate. So <laughs> I went from $480 a month for 60 months to a year later down to $410 a month for 72 months. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> they just shafted uh. me so hard. But again, not being financially literate and just, just being a payment shopper, right? I thought that they were kind of doing me a favor, not realizing that I was going to end up paying way more money on the car than it, it was ever going to be worth. And I, I would right. never not be upside down on that car. Right. Keep in mind, this Saturn is going to come up again later. I did a terrible refinance and put thousands of dollars more debt into a car that wasn't even worth the amount of the interest that I was paying. Right. That was number three. When I describe this to you, you're going to say, what could be possibly be worse than this? Okay. But here's my number two. I, I'm a little afraid. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm, I'm nervous. And I know you're doing better now. You've gotten, <laughs> yes. you, you've gotten yeah. over your affliction. Yeah. I'm thinking, <laughs> yes. but yes, I'm I still have. afraid. I'm still very nervous. It's all right. Now, so, okay. this number two, this happened when I was 20 years old. So we're talking okay. about the 90s, okay? Okay, yeah. Well, this also, is... 20 years old, everything from, from like 18 until 23 should yeah. just be wiped off the face yeah. of the planet, never to be yeah. talked about again. I can't, I cannot describe how grateful I am that we didn't have social media when I was. Uh, oh, my dad, yes. 100%. <laughs> oh, what a big cancel. Mm -hmm. All right, so number two. I was an unwitting accomplice to fraud. <laughs> oh, my. So, okay. This was my very first car purchase. Now, my mother had bought a car for me a couple of years before this, but it gave up the ghost. I always tell people they kicked me out of college. I didn't drop out. I got kicked out because I'm not a quitter. <laughs> so I moved back to Alabama where my mother lived and still lives. She had to shuttle me back and forth to work because I got a, a job there. Now, I have been working at this place. It was like a little call center for Sears. Um, I have been working there for a few summers up to this point. My mother finally got tired of having to drop me off and pick me up every day. She was like, we need to get you a car. So she worked with my brother. and They scrounged up a little down payment. And we went to this dealership of someone that she knew, a friend of a friend. Okay. So this guy is showing us different cars. And we're looking for things in a certain price range. And my eyes land upon this gorgeous champagne colored 1993 Pontiac Grand Prix. Oh, right? <laughs> I was, I was a GM guy up to this point. You were listening to the siren song and that siren was saying, <laughs> yes. come hither. Yes. They only wanted $5,000 for the car, which okay. seemed to me to be a good price. I fill out the credit application. I put in my income and things of that nature. One of the things that I noticed was the salesmen started changing some of the numbers on the application. Wait, what? Yeah. So I told him that I had been working at Sears for three summers. So he reported my employment as three years, like three consecutive years of employment right. when it was really, you know, three months and then a year passed and three more months. <laughs> it was, that was kind of the first seasonal thing. employment. Right. Yeah. But again, these I'm around people that I trust that are encouraging me and telling me, Hey, this is okay. We're just going to go with it. Let's just, Let's get this transaction done. Then I noticed that he changed my income. So they put on there, okay, my monthly income. So I calculated it based on my, I think I was making $8 an hour, <clears throat> which right. was actually pretty decent at the time. So that came out to whatever it was, yeah, $1,100 a month, whatever it was. Yep. 
I noticed that he changed it to I think sixteen or eighteen hundred dollars a month. Oh. He also, when he pulled my credit, he started asking me some questions on my credit report. Now, back then, it was against the law for them to show you your credit report when they pulled it. So that's really odd. Okay, I haven't heard yeah, that. Yeah, I got that, you. That was what at least that's what he told me. Like, I, I'm not right. allowed to show you this, but I do need to ask you because even though I was only 20 years old. I somehow managed to, I like already screw up my credit. <laughs> so I understand bad credit, first car purchase. No problem. We worked out every, yeah, we worked out everything. <laughs> I'm looking over my contract. Now, again, I'm kind of being rushed through this transaction because it's getting sure. late and we're tired and everybody wants to go. So I'm just kind of signing what they tell me to sign. I realized that a $5,000 car with a thousand dollar down payment, by the time that you add up all of the dealer fees and the interest, um, the total amount owed on the car was like nine thousand dollars. How much interest was on this sucker? I believe that was a twenty six percent loan. Oh, which is my like like dad. just below illegal at the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, holy cow! Oh, so the payments were like one hundred and seventy bucks a month for I don't even remember what the term was. Probably forty eight months. When I moved back to college and lost my job again. I'm also sure the car ended up getting repo like a year and a half later. Okay. <laughs> but that was my number two. I was an accomplice to fraud, but I didn't realize what was going on at the time. Well, yeah, but in all fairness, too, that wasn't your fault, though. That was just an absolute shady, shady car dealer, which hopefully saw the inside of a jail cell for quite a period of time because, dang. I, yeah, I highly doubt it because fraudulent practices are like that are very common in auto dealerships <laughs> way more common than you would think so we're down to number one um now again different people may rate these differently but for me this was like the worst thing i could have ever done i don't know fraud makes a solid number two man <laughs> but unknowing uh, fraud right. i was right, i was enough. i was a young pup sure absolutely you learned so, a lot for this mistake, now I was over 30 when I made this mistake, which to me makes it worse. Oh, sure. The number one dumbest mistake I've ever made buying a car was I took financial advice from the salesman. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So you remember that uh, oh. Saturn view I was talking about that I had to refinance? The the love of your life at that point in time? Oh, yeah. Because oh, it yeah. was a professional car? It was, it, I, I was a true yes. professional now. I'm yes, driving a car were. with leather seats in it. Our first year of marriage, she and I had just gotten married, and she had not found steady work yet because she moved from Georgia down to Jacksonville. We were, I was doing okay. We had the two car payments. You know, things were tight. We were okay. Well, I took in the Saturn for maintenance, and they told me that there was some type of engine problem that they had to fix, and it was going to be $800 to fix it. My credit still sucks at this point. I hadn't really recovered that much from sure. the refinance. I couldn't put it on a credit card because I didn't have one. We're freaking out trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? Because now sometimes a car will start, sometimes it won't. We end up taking it to a local Toyota dealership, not far from us. We were looking at smaller cars, something that will be within our price range, hoping that we could trade in the Saturn and, and try to work out a deal. Sure. We're looking at Corollas, 2010 Toyota Corollas. Again, your love of Toyota. Yes, absolutely. We test drive it. We like it. Now, it's a smaller car, but my wife was driving a Honda Civic at the time, so she was accustomed to driving smaller cars, and we thought this would be a good way for us to get into a nice, reliable car that hopefully has uh, an affordable payment. Right. Well, the payment on the new cars was going to be a little bit outside of our range because we would have to buy the car outright. They would not accept my Saturn on trade because of the mechanical problems that it had. So it was basically worthless at this point. We're kind of freaking out. And the salesman says, listen, you're in a tough spot. This is what you should do. You should just give that car back to the bank and your wife can sign a lease on this Corolla. We can get you into a nice low payment that's within your price range. You can go ahead and give the Saturn back. Now your credit will tank, but then what you can do because you make the majority of the income, you can help your wife obtain things and build her credit up. And then eventually you can, you can kind of slingshot it. There was an element of truth in what he said in that. Yeah. Well, later on, we realized that 
if she had credit cards in her name and she added me as an authorized user or an additional user, that history of both those payments would start to raise my credit score. So that was a good tip that he gave us that we utilized to help me rebuild my credit. The problem is he obviously had an ulterior motive to give me this advice because we signed a lease for this Corolla. Right. And with the amount of driving and the miles that we were putting on it, there was no way that we were not going to owe money by the time right. we got to the end of that three-year lease. They did end up repossessing the Saturn. It went on my credit. It fell off eventually. And after seven years, it's supposed to fall off. But I guess they found me again after I bought my house. <laughs> <laughs> and about four years ago, I got a call saying that you have this balance owed from this collection. And I didn't want it to go back on my credit. I think I had to send them like $500 to get it like completely resolved. So that was a repo that I did in 2010 that basically haunted me until 2019. Wow. <laughs> so oh I, I just goodness. want people to know out there, don't think that you can just repo something and then in two years it falls off your credit and you don't have to worry about it again. There's no statute limitations on how long they can chase you. And definitely do not ever take financial advice from a car salesman. <laughs> Those are my stories. Those are the oh, horrible God. things I've done, the crimes that I unknowingly committed. <laughs> uh, so I almost got divorced. Mm -hmm. I did a refi. I committed a crime and I you leased sort a car. Of committed a crime. Well, I mean, sort of. I knew it was happening. I didn't know it was against the law. Yeah. <laughs> the ignorance of the law is no excuse, Chris. That's true. So, yeah, those are my dumb car mistakes. I'm really hoping that people who are listening to this or watching this don't make the same mistakes that I made. Please do not make the same mistakes as him. No. <laughs> Please don't. And also, don't make the mistake of turning off this video without hitting that like button and subscribe to this channel so I can grow it. We're really trying to get more traction on this channel. So really would appreciate you hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. Chris, I really want to thank you for letting me share the story with you and banter with me about these horrible decisions I've made in my life. <laughs> well, I am happy to sit here and judge the heck out of you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, everybody, till next time.